वेलकम टू द केमिस्ट्री लाइव चैनल टुडे वी आर डिस्कस अबाउट द सिंथेसिस ऑफ फोर मिथाइल सेवन हाइड्रोक्सी कुमारिन द कुमारिन ड्रग इज वेरी यूजफुल एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस इन कुमारिन हाउ वी प्रिपेयर एंड व्हाट इज दैट बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द कुमारिन लेट्स सी जंप इनटू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड्स एंड वी विल टेक अ लुक इन डेप्थ सो हियर एज वी सी कुमारिन हैज बीन प्रोड्यूस इन लेबोरेटरी फॉर मेनी इयर्स फॉर कमर्शियल यूज ड्यू टू इट्स एक्सटेंसिव इंपॉर्टेंस Kumarin are a vital group of natural occurring compounds which is broadly distributed in plant kingdom okay it's very useful member of this group display a broad range of application as fragrances pharmaceuticals additive to the food cosmetics agrochemical industries optical brightening agents dispersive flu- fluorescent tunable dyes laser biological activity like althematic hypnotic insecticidal and anticoagulant properties so it is so in that slide we will take a look at the principle involved the preparation of kumarin interaction of phenol with beta keto ester in presence of acid condensing agent yields in kumarin okay it's called pacman reaction this is a pacman reaction sulfuric acid act as a condensing agent for a monohydric phenol and beta keto ester although phenol react better in presence of aluminum chloride so what they see they asked to use either sulfuric acid or aluminum chloride the mechanism of action is thought to involve initial formation of beta keto ester which then cyclize and dehydrate to yield kumarin polyhydric phenol particularly when two hydroxyl groups are meta oriented react with great easiness and sulfuric acid has utilized as a condensing agent with careful temperature to ensure that it could yield so that is about the principle of that one aim we are aware because we start with the experiment so definitely we are with the aim requirement is resource in all ethyl aceto acetate and concentrated sulfuric acid now we will switch to the our main part of the slide is mole ratio so how we can define the mole ratio because the given mole ratio is 1 1.11 raised to 1.11 raised to 1 reciprocal with resource in all ethyl aceto acetate and concentrated sulfuric acid so on the basis of that if we take 5.2 g resource in all so what is the word mole and what, how many grams or ml ethyl acetyl acetate and concentrated acetyl acetate is required so for that one as usual we we'll start with the moles of resource in all is equal to weight of resource in all divided by molecular weight of resource in all so if we did it when divide 5.2 divided by 110.11 we got 0.047 mole this is a mole of resource in all now our primary goal to get the ml of ethyl acetate and concentrated sulfuric acid so it divided by h in that table box so h is equal to nothing but weight of ethyl aceto acetate is equal to how we can calculate the weight that is important point so for that purpose we need a mole of ethyl aceto acetate into molecular weight of ethyl aceto acetate that we know the moles of ethyl acetate but we can take a look about the molecular weight of ethyl aceto acetate The molecular weight of ethyl acetyl acetate is the molecular weight of resource in all multiplied by mole ratio, which is 1.11. So, which is 0.047 into 1.11 is equal to we get out 0.052. So, weight of ethyl acetyl acetate is 0.052 multiplied by molecular weight 1.13.14 is equal to 6.82 gram. if we divide with the density is equal to 1.220 then we get in ml which is 5.59 ml we require so here i would like to mention 5.59 ml of ethyl acetyl acetate is required so switch to the another is the l same manner we'll get that one weight of concentrated sulfuric acid or weight of s sulfuric acid is based in denotation moles of sulfuric acid multiplied by molecular weight of sulfuric acid so it is the same because five if you pour 0.047 multiplied by 1 we get a 1 so here the 0.047 as it is and the molecular weight is 98 so we'll get here 4.62 g divided with the density is about uh, 1.02 so we'll get here 4.53 ml so i would like to mention here 4.53 ml now we will switch to the our main portion of that whole the practical it is reaction scheme so in reaction scheme you'll see here this resource in all 
that is ethyl acetoacetate or ethyl 3 oxobutanate and our product 7 hydroxy 4 methyl 2 H coumarin. See that this is the molecular formula and this is molecular weight what we mentioned here. Okay. So there is two products come together, use the concentrated sulfuric acid as a acid catalyst, the room temperature, we will stir it, we will get the, our product. But we can get, we want to dip look and we will proceed for that reaction mechanism. So what is the reaction mechanism first we have to, we have to achieve. Inductive effect is appeared here and the inductive effect here we get del positive, del negative and that is that manner that, that ethyl acetoacetate. Somehow here due to the resonance we will get the positive charge at the oxygen and negative charge at the hydrogen. So what happened? This attacked over here. When this attacked over here, it just form a bond like that. That hydrogen bond is shifted toward a cyclized bond. And here, the bond is shifted to the lone pair. The bond pair shifted to the... So at the end, we will get this kind of compound here, intermediate compound, after removal of minus H or removal of H+. plus. Here we see what the removal of H plus here is directly attached to here and it is got OH2, it prepared OH2. At the moment that is prepared OH2, again here removal of H plus is happen and we will get negative charge which is again here the effect is or here the inductive effect is proceed and we that lone pair attacked over here and we will get the cyclized form after removal of C2H5OH. How we get cyclized form? Because it is inductive effect operates here, when it's come back, the bulky group is removed to take a it's just removed and get the electrons. So here we get C2H5OH, removal of C2H5OH, we get our compound, but it is still has H2. So again this H is come to the bond, that bond transferred to here and the carbon over that position or the, that position is become more electron negative and it give the electron to the bond pair and water molecule take the electron and leave it. So also here the removal of water molecule is proceed. And finally we get our compound coumarine. That is the mechanism how we get 7 hydroxy 4 methyl coumarine. The numbering is pretty easy. The procedure section weigh 30 ml of ethyl acetoacid and 250 ml RBF, add 10 gram of resorcinol, dissolve it, maintain 10 degree temperature using the ice bath, then add 9.1 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid, put the round bottom flask in ice bath, gradually add the concentrated sulfuric acid to the round bottom flask with constant stirring the solution acid to litmus. So litmus paper if you check, we get acidic solution, keep to the mixture at room, temp room temperature 15 to 20 minutes, heat it on water bath, using the condenser about 30 to 35 minutes, so first keep it room temperature and then half an hour use it the water condenser, heat it pour it, when it's cooled down, pour it into the water, collect the crude product by filtration, wash the product with cold water twice and dry it in oven till 100 degree centigrade temperature, 12 gram product will yield, it about 75 percent yield we get. Recrystallization using 95 percent ethanol rectified spirit, pure compound is separated and colorless needle is obtained with melting point 185 degree centigrade. That is the procedure and recrystallization step. In the calculation, that is all the same, that like mole formula of resorcinol, molecular formula of sulfur hydroxy, four methyl sulfur hydroxy coumarin, molecular weight of resorcinol, molecular weight of or methyl sulfur hydroxy coumarin. If we take one one zero point eleven gram of mole of resorcinol, then we we'll get back the one seventy six point seventeen gram uh, for methyl sulfur hydroxy coumarin. So what about if we get five point two? If we take five point two, then here we get this some different digit. Practical yield here we have 4.5. So 4.5 divided by theoretical yield into 100 we get percentage yield. That is our percentage yield actually what we receive from the calculation. The next couple of slides is very important as the characterization point of view. The first is IR. That IR has been published in a journal. So I'll mention here the reference number as well. Here you see 2854.5 point centimeter inverse, there is a one IR peak, there is another IR peak, that is the aromatic region peak, that is the another peak. So you have to identify that IR and write it here. It is very easy because in previous we did it actually with OH, with C double bond O, C O, C and C is stretching vibration frequencies. So it is very easy. In mass, yeah, of course there is a 176 M by Z, it is denoted to M plus 
and 177 is equal to m plus 1. So here there is two mass peak available is, is 100% relative intensity and it's about 20% relative intensity. In next we will take a look at the characterization through NMR. Here I will put the both NMR is actual NMR as well as the predicted one. So you see in actual NMR this OH is about here is merge. See what I mentioned here is 2.59 merging. So that is the OH in the actual NMR and that is the chloroform peak. Okay fine. That is 6.64 is equal to 2H of H8 and H6 that is two hydrogens the peak is and then 5.88 is about the H3 peak this hydrogen peak here H3 peak that is H6 and H8 peak 7.19 which is here a little bit in small portion it is H5 peak and 2.47 or 46 here somewhere it is the peak of H9 this one not that one this one because it's a DMSO D6 when we couple with DMSO and that both this then it is. So the spectra is taken in chloroform and DMSO mixture so we will get here the D DMSO peak as well as the chloroform peak and this is 2.20 is the peak of the 3 hydrogen which is methyl group. Now we will see the predicted animal. See here the difference is only that OH, here the OH, okay. So what is here in the solution and we get the predicted actual NMR is far away different from that predicted one. Let's see if you start with actual that, that we have something difference. So as mentioned this 2.40, yes fine that is 2.20, so it is not much more difference. So 2.40, 3H, singlet. Here there is also 6.62 over there, we have a 6.28 and something, there is not much more difference, it is 7.5, okay, there is 6.23, okay. So rest of that, there is a 1H, there is a 1H, there is 1H, there is 1H, there is a doublet, there is a singlet, there is a doublet and singlet, that's it, that's it for the characterization portion. So next is result table, so here the result table of 4 methyl 7 hydroxy coumarin, there is a name and percentage yield, you have to fill the whole the data as you get it from the calculation as well as the practical section. In the presence of OH group, presence of CO over there, C double bond O group as well as CH3 group. So that is confirmed that the 4 methyl 7 hydroxy coumarin is prepared through NMR, mass and IR. We can conclude the whole the group and we can get the characterization of the whole the group. There is some references which I used to create that whole the stuff and at the end, thank you for watching guys. If you have any doubts and comments, please write in comment section below and do not forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get that kind of practical video soon to you.